this week on Centennial Student News. We take another look on how FFA was involved in this state fair. The 50th anniversary of New Mexico's most colorful tradition, and we have the inside look. Botany, plants, what is it all about? All that and more coming right up, so stay tuned because Centennial Student News starts right now. I'm your anchor Richard Aguilar and I'm Jaden Sanchez. Let's get started. Last week we took a look at how FFA prepared for the state fair. This week reporter Samara Marquez will give us an update. The Southern New Mexico State Fair just ended and it was an exciting and rewarding time for Centennial FFA. Uh, so the last event we just had was the Southern New Mexico State Fair and uh, it went really well. We had uh, six students show up to exhibit their livestock. So that was uh, Marcus Flores and Sarah Bailey did uh, their goat project. And then Sarah Bailey also did her uh, dairy heifers. And then um, Jacob Mora showed his pigs. And then we had Jasmine Montano and uh, Von Zell Gar Garcia did rabbits. And then Grace Longwell did uh, chicken. Several of them uh, placed in their specific categories. I think the best result that we had was Jacob Moore. He ended up with reserve champion uh, with his pig, and so he was able to sell it on Friday at the sale. This year, the new calendar worked in FFA's favor and allowed students to be more focused on their animals and projects, not having to worry about any school. Um, I think it was interesting this year since it did fall on our fall break. Um, it was nice to have students able to just focus on their projects and not have to worry about school or their assignments. Um, so that allowed them to be out there the entire time to work with their animals during the day, make sure that their nutrition was being adequately delivered in the morning and in the afternoon. And so that scheduling really helped us a lot as far as just being like physically present on the livestock grounds. Not only is it a great experience for students, but it gives them great opportunities to make money and make connections in the agricultural world. Oh my God. Uh, I feel like I did pretty okay. I mean, this was my first year showing and I got ninth out of 15, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, I could have made sale. I, I could have sold my goat for more than what I wanted to. Next year, I'll actually be showing a, a couple more animals other than just a goat. The fair was an amazing time for our FFA members on their path to success. Congratulations to our future farmers and their animals at the fair. For Centennial Student News, this has been Samara Marcus reporting. Only one event can gather people across the world to New Mexico. That event is the 50th annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Jessia Murphy gives us a behind the scenes look at the fiesta. The first week in October is anticipated by every New Mexican. It's the week when we can look to the sky and see it dotted with a show of hot air balloons. It's the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, and I was lucky enough to get a behind the scenes look into what gets us flying. The Balloon Fiesta didn't used to be as world renowned as it is now. Believe it or not, only 51 years ago in 1972, 13 pilots launched from a shopping mall. Board member Ray Bear has been along for the whole ride. It's, it's hard to define the starting point and what is ballooning, but I've been a pilot for over 40 years, uh, but I started playing in ballooning in 1973. I went out and talked to a pilot who had just flown and landed. He seemed very excited about his flight, and uh, it got me interested at that point. So. Ballooning can be a fun and immersive experience for everyone. As, as time has gone on, the favorite part has become, it didn't start this way, but it has become the joy of the people that are with me. So when I give rides, it's typically their first time, and uh, that has made it really nice for me. It's, it sort of reinvigorates my interest in this form. But ballooning isn't all pretty pictures and cool views. It's a real and incredibly dangerous sport. You've got to think safety, uh, no matter what you're doing, whether you're driving the chase vehicle or flying the balloon, you've just got to think safety because there's a lot of opportunities to be unsafe. While ballooning doesn't seem very accessible to the average person, 
People like Scott Appleman are making sure you can get one more thing off your bucket list. Well, you know, I think starting off privately, it's like, uh, you know, you learn a lot of good things and, and things like that, that you're doing it. I saw a great opportunity of turning it into a business. Um, I didn't realize it would be quite this successful, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, the, the difference is, I mean, we're very serious about it. Safety is number one. We're flying 320 days a year and we're flying 45,000 passengers. So we have standards and requirements, safety measures that we always do, uh, that we've implemented inside the company in order to provide the safest, honest, memorable, excellent adventure we can for our passengers. Commercial ballooning is much different than privately flying. However, you can still reap the same benefits. This is the coolest thing in the world. I can't believe that I'm blessed and lucky enough to make a living and a career and have a, over 100 employees doing commercial ballooning. The Balloon Fiesta is full of early risers, sky-high adventures, and is definitely worth a visit next October. For Centennial Student News, this has been Jedzia Murphy reporting. Hey Hawks, I'm Adrian Villegas and welcome back to this week's Hawk Heat. I'm here to give you an update on this week's forecast. It'll be cold weather, a chilly way to start the spooky season. Today's weather will be a high of 69 and a low of 45. Tomorrow's weather will be a high of 70 and a low of 46. Friday's weather will be a high of 70 and a low of 49. This weekend's weather will be pretty cold, so don't forget your sweaters and beanies. Saturday's weather will be a high of 72 and a low of 50. Sunday's weather will be a high of 74 and a low of 52. Stay warm, Hawks, and I'll see you next time. For Centennial Student News, this has been Adrian Villegas. We'll be back with sports right after this commercial break. Live local. Eat local. Shop local, support your local businesses. Hi Hawks, welcome back to Hawk Sport Network. I'm Isaac Aguilar. And I'm Sienna Rodriguez, and we're here to give you our latest sports updates. Let's start off with football. We recently beat Carlsbad 44-7, and before that, beat Hobbs 27-20. Our football team plays this Saturday against Alamo, and then we play Cruces next Friday. We don't really talk about who's number one or where we're at as far as rankings are concerned. Uh, we, don't, we don't pay too much attention to that, and you know, we're just going to keep on focusing on, on what we're doing and, and, and you know, see what happens. There's a lot of good football team, teams out there, um, and uh, we're, just, we're, just, uh, you know, we're just blessed to be uh, in the conversation with the rest of those guys. So um, I believe our expectations for the next few games is just to, uh, you know, get better each game and, and you know, start working on things that, uh, you know, we need to improve on as far as, um, you know, uh, preparing our, ourselves for, you know, playoffs. And, you know, so every, every, uh, every game we expect to get a little bit better and just uh, continue to work, you know, uh, continue through with the process and, and uh, you know, see what happens from there. How on the volleyball? They've won the last two games against Oregon Mountain and Gadsden with a score of 3-0 for both games. So our Hawk Volleyball team goes up to Alamo tomorrow and plays Mayfield next Tuesday. Now let's see how our boys soccer team is doing. We beat Gadsden with a score of 3-2 and before that beat Mayfield 2-1. Our boys soccer team plays against Cruces for our final regular season game. Let's wish them luck. Be number one, it feels really good. It feels like, you know, all, all our hard work has paid off and, um, it puts a big target on our backs, but that's something that we're ready to deal with and handle, so it's, it's nice. Well, we're all working hard, and um, we're doing the things that are important on the field, but we're also doing them off the field, too. So everyone's taking good care of their bodies and you know, just getting in the mindset of, of the next game that we have. I don't know. We'll just take it one game at a time. And now girls soccer. They beat Gadsden with a score of 5-0, to zero, and before that, they tied with Mayfield 1-1. One one. They also played Cruces for their final regular season. Good luck, Hawks. 
Um, we've been preparing on and off the field, whether it's like going to practice after school and working hard there, or like going early in the mornings to watch film and like evaluate like what we've done, what we've done right, wrong. I think my senior season's going pretty good. Um, I feel like I've played pretty good overall, and I feel like I've I've been a good teammate and been part of the team. I just feel like I've been putting in the hard work. Um, it means a lot just because it's my last season, what we worked all, what I've worked four years hard for, and I've, every year I've worked for my seniors, and I hope like the younger kids work for me, and we all want to work for each other. And it means a lot just finishing out good with the, like finishing out with the bang. Well, that's all for our most recent sports updates. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Hey Richard, have you seen the planters outside the Freshman Academy? Yeah, I have. Ms. Selipek brought those and the botany class back to Centennial. Here's Evan Rogers with the details. Botany, a class that hasn't been known to our school for many years, is finally back with Ms. Selipek bringing this long forgotten class back for students to enjoy. First had to get it approved by admin and they're just to make sure that, you know, it was a class that had a curriculum and it would meet all of our standards. And then I had to get enough students to sign up for it in order for it to actually make. So I had to do a lot of advertising on my part for that. Okay. Ms. Selpek has a long history with botany and this history would inspire her to bring botany back to our school. The reason I am where I am right now is because of agriculture. My dad is a commercial vegetable grower and so I grew up in agriculture my entire life. My mom runs the pumpkin patch and corn maze. So I've always been immersed in it and that's why I went and got my agri-science education degree, which is how I can teach ag and also why I love botany so much because I love growing things and I love being able to bounce those ideas off of my parents whenever uh, I talk about this class. Students have many fun experiences in the botany class and are able to take pride in the food that they produce. And so we have a bunch of different systems in our classroom that all grew different varieties of lettuce and I wanted them to actually enjoy what they've been growing. So I told them if they could grow the lettuce, I would bring everything and we would have a day of just enjoying what we have grown. So that's why we had salad party and I'm sure we're gonna do it again this semester because it seemed to be a big hit. For Centennial Student News, this is Evan Rogers reporting. That's all for this week, Hawks. I'm Jaden Sanchez. And I'm Richard Ray Aguilar. Tune in to our next show, Spooky Edition. Bye! Bye.